to be wonderful. I want to show you something you've got to do. You see, many times when God does big things in our lives, we just say thank you and we go away. It's not enough. And that's the reason some people don't see more in their lives. You realize that what has started here, this meeting, this series of meetings, the High Life Conference, was for a purpose. Okay? The conference was for a purpose. This is not the purpose. The purpose is not the meeting. This is not the end of it. This meeting was done for you after the meeting. That is to say, the life you live after this place, the quality of your life henceforth is the purpose of this meeting. And so I've got to uh, get this whole thing put together for you in closing. Are you hearing me? Has it been wonderful? It's been glorious. Yes. Yes. I gave you three points. Uh, day before yesterday. Was it? Or in the morning yesterday. Yesterday morning. About your role. So. It's important that you know your role. God has shown us in so many different ways. That he will always keep his word. We have a role to play. There are many of you who haven't experienced your healing here. On your way home, you discover you've been healed. Some of you will get home and find out that you have been healed. In the next one week, there are many of you who will discover that you have been healed. In the next one month, you will see. The anointing in this place will settle on you for a long time. It will be on you for a long time. Hallelujah. So I gave you three points. The first one was what? Meditation. You remember? Good. Then the second one was what? Speaking in tongues. And we talked about those two, right? And then the third one was what? Be filled with the Spirit. Now I want to share some of that with you. So you realize... This is what God wants for you. He's given us a supernatural life. And we've got to live it. Live that supernatural life. That's what Christianity is about. It's a supernatural life. Every day. There's power in your words. There's power in your life. There's power even in your body. Because your body is the living tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. It's his temple. He lives in you. He lives in your body because he lives in your spirit. Hallelujah. All right. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says, And be not drunk with wine. Can we have it up? Visions chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Did you notice it's not a full stop? What is it? Tell me what is there. What's the sign there? Thank you. Meaning it's not over. Okay. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19. Speaking to yourselves. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Notice that. He says speaking to yourselves. That means I'm talking to me and you're talking to you. Not speaking to one another. But to yourself. Okay. So you're talking to yourself. In what? He says in psalms and hymns. Spiritual songs. Singing. Everything there is about singing. You can sing the psalms. You sing the hymns. The spiritual songs, you sing them. Because the the, the songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. But it says, the message, the, the content of that song is to you. 
Hallelujah. Okay. So, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. All right. Go to Colossians chapter 3 and um, let's look at verse 16. Colossians chapter 3. Okay, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, the first one we saw was to yourself. And this one, to one another. He says, teaching and admonishing in psalms. This is ministry. It's all in singing. This is not talking about the teaching ministry like I'm doing right now. This is us ministering one to another. He says, I can minister to me in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in my heart to the Lord. Like when I sing, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. I'm singing, but I'm singing to myself. Hallelujah. I'm singing. I'm singing to myself. I can also sing to you. And when I sing to you, it will be teaching you. Like we sang one just now. And we were saying, come on, come on everybody. Don't you want to be a part of, of a kingdom? There's joy in the kingdom. There's love in the kingdom. And we're exhorting somebody. We're singing to somebody. We're, we're staring you. And we're saying, come on everybody. That's, that's the one we read in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. But notice something about all of this in both scriptures is all about singing. It's all about singing. How the Holy Spirit loves singing. Maybe you say you don't have a great voice. It's got nothing to do with it. Because you're not singing to someone else. You are singing. He says making melody in your heart to the Lord. The melody is to the Lord. Maybe when you sing it, it may not be melodious to anybody around you, but to the Lord, it's melodious. To the Lord, it means something. Are you there? Praise God. Why is there a Come on, bring the paper here. Let me see what you put there. Glory to God. So, God wants us to do his word as he has given us. Turn to Psalm 100. Praise God. All right. Read from verse 1. Verse 2. Did you see that? He says to make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, oh, he lands. Then he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. All right. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And let's read from verse 14 into 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, from verse 14 into 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Pray. Sing. Pray. Sing. Many pray. They don't sing. But how God wants us to sing. How he wants us to sing. Every, every great man of God in the Bible recognized this reality. Every great woman of God in the Bible recognized this. The church needs to realize that when we are singing, we are not waiting for latecomers to come. So you say, have they started the service? No, not yet. We are just singing. We are just singing. Because they don't understand. We are not just singing. That is a major part of the service. And some people think it is used to fill the gap. It's wrong. Singing is important. He says, I will pray with the spirit 
And I will pray with the understanding also. And he already told us in the 14th verse that if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Which means when you find me speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, it's coming from my spirit. My spirit is praying. So I'm activating my spirit by speaking in tongues. Then he says, I will sing with the spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. So praying with the spirit and singing with the spirit are more important than praying in your understanding and and, and singing in your understanding. Because they come first. With the spirit first. With the understanding afterward. You see, because many people don't have this order, a lot of times their prayers are wrong. Oh, Heavenly Father, they're talking. Give us this, help me this, do that, do that. They say all the negative things without realizing. If you will start out by praying in tongues, the Spirit of God will inspire your prayer that your words will be carefully chosen when you pray in your understanding. Then you find that you are not praying amiss. The Bible says the reason many of God's children ask and don't receive is because they ask amiss. But if the Holy Spirit guides your tongue, you will not ask amiss. You suddenly realize that maybe you're, you've been asking for something he's already done. Like the lady who came out here earlier on today, she said something. She said, but I'm running. See, she thought she needed a healing. But she found she already got it. She said, but I'm running. You know, in Canada, we had an interesting situation. A certain lady came out to receive, to testify of her healing. Then she said so there was something else she wanted prayer for. So I said, well, the God who healed this one you just talked about has already healed that one. She said, okay, but touch me. I said, what? She said, put your hand on my head. <laughs> so I was laughing like that and talking to the congregation and saying, this lady has already, she couldn't wait for, she grabbed my hand by herself and put it on her <laughs> She took it by herself and put it on her head and walked away. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) If you will pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, the anointing will be so stared that the words you will speak in your understanding will be carefully chosen for you. By the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's our helper. He came to help us. He came to help us. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. See? For the Holy Spirit helps. He prays through us with groanings. Deep sighs that cannot be uttered. But then he says, the Lord who searches the heart. Knows the mind of the spirit. For the spirit prays in a seeds for the saints. According to the will of God. Then he says, and we know. That all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. Why? Because he prayed like this. The Holy Spirit has led you. In the kind of prayer. That the father receives. Hallelujah. Instead of, oh Lord, what shall I do? Help me. What am I going to do? Oh Lord, please talk to me. (laughs) These are the kind of prayers a lot of people pray that don't work. Now you're going to pray correctly. Start by praying in tongues. He says, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. It is the understanding that is the also. He didn't say I will pray with the understanding and pray with the spirit also. That's what most Christians do. They reverse it. They pray with the understanding and pray with the spirit also. But he says, Mm-mm. I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Singing is so vital because Zephaniah chapter 3. Some of you have never opened Zephaniah. Meanwhile, you sang a song from there today. He says, Zephyr, what? 
<laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3 from verse 17. The song you were singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. Did you hear that? The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is not the Father. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is not the Son. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee and in thee is the Holy Spirit. He's the one in the church. He's the one in us and with us. That's the Holy Spirit. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Do you want the anointing of God? Notice, see, many times some people don't understand the, 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 the way the kingdom functions. We sing a lot in ministry. Why? Because of this. What you just saw. It's the way the Holy Spirit responds. The Holy Spirit wants us to sing. Because the Holy Spirit himself sings. He says he will joy over you with singing. He will joy over you with singing. He says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy must be expressed. Otherwise it's not joy. Joy must be expressed. Let me see something here. See if I... You know, sometimes... I write a lot of stuff. And um so mangaka yadele supros. Did you hear what I said? Huh? Do you know the meaning of what I said? Okay. Take your pen and write the definition I want to give you. Because you won't get it anywhere. Joy is an emotion evoked by satisfaction, appreciation, and pleasure. That's what joy is. It's an emotion evoked by satisfaction, appreciation, and pleasure. Now look at this. This is wonderful. The Bible says that the Lord is satisfied with us. He's glad to have us. He's glad about us. That's what the Bible says. And the Lord loves us. It means that he appreciates us. He made us. And you know what? He made us for his pleasure. No wonder he says the Lord would joy over you. He would joy over you. With what? Singing. The way he expresses his own joy. In your midst is singing. How does the Holy Spirit sing? If you were to listen to the songs of the Holy Spirit, you will not hear the Holy Spirit singing there. If you go the other way, you will not hear the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit can be heard only in the spirit of a man that has received him. So when that one receives the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit begins singing, the song comes out. Our brothers and sisters in Christ open their mouths and the Holy Spirit sings through them. Many times some of them even write new songs as the Holy Spirit gives them. These are the songs of the Holy Spirit. Some of the songs you sang during this meeting. That's the Holy Spirit singing. So sometimes you have this, this urge within you to sing a song. Sing it. Because it's the Holy Spirit rejoicing over you with singing. Hallelujah. It's so important. Says the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say. He will say. He will joy over you. He says he will rest in his love. He will rest in what? His love. Hallelujah. It's so important that we learn this thing. In the book of Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 25, the Bible tells you something very remarkable. Paul and Silas were put in prison. While they were there, with their hands and their feet in stock, 
They couldn't move. Their hands and their feet were in, in stocks. They couldn't shake. They couldn't, they couldn't say anything. They were like that. That's how they put them in prison. To punish them for preaching the gospel. The Bible says at midnight. At midnight. At midnight. At the hour of abandonment. At midnight. When they were supposed to have been forgotten. At midnight, when the pain should increase. At midnight. The Bible says, Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto God. In their condition, they were singing praises unto God. What does the Bible say? There was an earthquake in the prison. The Holy Spirit moved into operation and saved them. They didn't sing because they wanted deliverance. They didn't sing because they were trying to get God to do something. They were singing from their hearts. Rejoicing to be identified with Jesus Christ in his suffering. They didn't know that doing that was pushing just the right button. They were not asking for an earthquake. But they knew something. That singing unto the Lord was the right thing to do. Whether you are in trouble or everything is fine with you. Are you hearing me? Learn to sing. Learn to sing. Before and after a miracle. These ones sang and a miracle happened. Go back to the Old Testament. You find the great Moses. When he saw the children of Egypt, the, 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 the Egyptian soldiers. And their horses and their chariots and some of their biggest soldiers, the officers who wanted to take them back to Egypt. When Moses looked and saw the, the sea swallow them and cover them, and they were all buried in that sea until as they waited, the Israelites waited until these dead bodies were brought up, floating to the shore. The Bible says when Moses saw their bodies, he began to sing. Hallelujah. Moses, the man of God, began to sing. And Miriam got the women to sing the song. And the children of Israel all began to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider thrown into the sea. Where are you? The Lord, my God, has strength and song. Is that become my victory? The Lord, my God, my strength and song. Is that become my victory? The Lord is God and in my father's garden I will exhort him the Lord is God and I will praise him my father's garden I will exalt him Moses began to sing that song after the miracle are you hearing me? no many after the miracle yeah, it's okay praise God amen no that's when Moses started his praise service are you hearing me? So you can see why I'm not allowing you to go after all the miracles. You want to carry your bag and go. And shout hallelujah and go. No, you're not going yet. <laughs> hallelujah. Deborah, the prophetess, did the same thing. After she had destroyed Jabin and Sisera. What happened? She said there was trouble in the streets. He said, people were afraid to walk in the streets until I, the boy, arose a mother in Israel. And she started her victory song. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord.
they did. They sang praise to God. She said, hear, O ye kings. Give ear, O ye princes. Ah, even I will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. I will sing unto the Lord. What is your own testimony? What is your own testimony? What is your own testimony? King Hezekiah of the Bible had a miracle. God sent a prophet to tell him, you are going to die. You know what that means? Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Isaiah chapter 38. Turn there. Book of Isaiah chapter 38. Oh, hallelujah. This is an excerpt from Pastor Chris teaching. You can get the complete message on the Pastor Chris Digital Library. Available on the Love Old App Store. God bless you.